Okay, and welcome back students who are taking financial accounting. Um, in this series of videos, we are working on the Chapter 3 exercises, uh, Group B exercises that are assigned in your digital study guide. And as always, um, you know, if you're not understanding something, pause, rewind the video, watch it again. Um, but because this here is application, we're working on the exercises, I mean, if you don't know how, if you don't understand the concepts, then you're not going to be able to apply them to the particular situation. So, um, you know, even though you may be able to rewind the application, you know, these exercise videos, um, most likely if you don't understand something, go back and watch the theory videos for the chapter or watch the intro to uh, accounting and bookkeeping uh, videos. Because if you don't understand the concepts, you're not able to apply them. Um, if you do understand the concept and you know you don't you're still not able to apply it you know yeah you know pause and watch the video again as a matter of fact um, this particular video when I was working on uh, problem 3-31 I actually ended up having to stop the video because I didn't understand I had to think through um, what the question was asking me to do because as I'm creating these videos, I'm creating them as if I was a student, you know, just working on them, okay? And so I got a little flustered and confused, and I had to think through it. You know, it's not that I don't understand the concepts. I do. I just didn't understand the application. So um, I didn't understand the situation. So that's one thing. But just because you're not getting a problem, um, you know, and you're not understanding the application part of it, you know, realize that it may be due to a lack of understanding of the concepts, okay? Um, and therefore, go back and watch the theory videos, um, uh, you know, to help you out. And if you still don't understand something, then feel free to contact and speak with an instructor, okay? So with that said, let's pick up with um, problem number 30, which unfortunately was, you know, I had completed in 10 minutes and now I have to do it all over again. Right, but uh, c'est la vie. All right, so it says journalize the adjusting entries at July 31st, um, the end of the accounting period. Omit explanations. Okay. Now, um, remember, when it comes to adjusting entries, um, or it comes to journal entries, when you don't know how to make a journal entry, um, the, my thought process is, one, I ask myself, does this affect cash? Yes or no? And I've covered this in theory videos. And if it's no, then I ask myself, does this affect accounts receivable or accounts payable? Yes or no. And if the answer is still no, then I work with the account that makes the most amount of sense. Okay. Now, here's the thing. When it comes to normal transactions, all right, during the course of an accounting period, you know, accounts, uh, cash, accounts receivable, and accounts payable, and that'll make up about 75% of your transactions, 75, 80% of your transactions. Um, but when it comes to adjusting journal entries, you know, almost always you're going to have to uh, look towards the account that makes the most amount of sense. It doesn't necessarily mean skip over the thought process of cash, accounts receivable, and accounts payable. It's just that uh, because of the nature of adjusting entries, um, you're already working with something that you already have done and therefore you already know. And so you would, uh, you know, work with the account that makes the most amount of sense. And so for letter A here, um, it says employee salaries owed for Monday through Thursday for a five day uh, work week. Well, if I owe salaries, you know, if the business owes the salaries, you know, that's a liability account, okay? And when you look under your liabilities, you'll probably see salaries uh, payable, right? All right, so it has a balance, and if you owe 4500 and you're making the adjusting entry, that means you're going to increase salaries payable by 4500 Well, if salaries payable is a liability account, and we know we increase our liabilities on the credit side, that means we're going to end up crediting salaries payable for forty five hundred dollars and since debits have to equal credits we have to debit something else and you know why are we owing it well it's you know salaries worked you know during the course of, of business you know and of course that's an expense to the business so if you look under expenses you'll see a salaries 
expense account and you would debit that for $4,500 and that's your journal entry. Right next, unearned service revenue now own, now earned. Okay, so remember, I'm going to just abbreviate this as unearned USV for unearned server, service revenue. Right, so you've already recorded an amount for the unearned service revenue. And we know that unearned service revenue is a liability account and that just like um, for salaries payable, you know, a liability, the normal balance is a credit. Well, if it's now earned, okay, that means we have to take it out of that account, right? Um, and so therefore we're going to decrease that balance. Well, if the normal balance is a credit, you know, in order to decrease it, that means we end up having to debit unearned service revenue for uh, $1,250. Debits have to equal credit, so we credit something else. Well, we're talking about service revenue, so we look under our revenue accounts and we'll see an account for service revenue. And so we're moving it because we're earning it. It's just like making a sale, okay, for $1,250, right? The only difference, you know, I mean, if we made a sale, you know, um, and we're being paid cash, right? We would debit cash and credit unearned service revenue, okay? Well, that's what we're doing here. We're crediting our service, not unearned service revenue, just plain service revenue, sorry, because we're making the sale. Um, but, you know, here, instead of um, receiving the cash, we were already prepaid the amount. That's why um, that prepayment of the cash is under a liability account. Yeah, there's, you know, the money was in the cash account, but we still owe an amount, and that's why that amount is uh, is in unearned service revenue. Well, we still have the cash, and we're accounting for how much we still, you know, how much is uh, we'd have, be owing the company, you know, whoever gave us the cash. So uh, we're recording the sale of service revenue, and then we're take we're reducing the unearned service revenue amount. We're not reducing the cash. The cash is ours unless they request to have it sent, you know, or returned to them. Okay, and that's why we, you know, it's un, it's in unearned service revenue because it's an amount that we still owe. Okay, um, depreciation. Um, when it comes to depreciation, um, you know, we're expensing. Um, uh, our, you know, our depreciation. So uh, for depreciation, we're using the accounts uh, accumulated depreciation and depreciation expense. Well, if my depreciation is 1900, that means I'm expensing it. And we know that in an expense account, the normal balance is a debit. So I'm debiting depreciation expense for the 1900 and debits have to equal credit, so I credit accumulated depreciation for 1900, right? And that, that's my entry, but um, before I go any further, I want you to be aware that, you know, I just wrote accumulated depreciation, right? Um, normally, you would, uh, that account would, um, you know, accumulate depreciation as a contra account. So let's just look at vehicles as a an example, all right, and then I have accumulated depreciation, and I would write that name as accumulated depreciation dash vehicle. Okay. Now, for this exercise, we don't know what we're depreciating, so we're not putting anything. But on your chart of accounts, you have to list the accumulated depreciation um, and give it the description of the asset account. Okay. For the simple reason, let's uh, or let, um, let's maybe make it a little bit easier to understand by going and saying, um, say uh, equipment. So this would be a cumulative depreciation equipment, and then let's say furniture. 
and we have accumulated depreciation furniture. Okay, the reason why I'm going through all of this and and uh, going over the fact that you have to describe the account correctly is that you know depending upon how much your equipment you're depreciating, you know let's say it's two hundred dollars, all right. Well, that two hundred dollars, if you didn't, if you just debited, I'm sorry, if you just credited accumulate depreciation, and you didn't have you know uh, the proper description how do you know what that two hundred dollars for is it for the equipment account or is it for furniture you don't know because the accumulate depreciation has even though it has different account number it you know the designator the description you know has no name so you whenever you use accumulated depreciation always put in the name of the uh, asset account that uh, is the contra account for it okay um, so uh, that's just a, a little technical FYI here and it just popped into my head because you know in this particular example we don't have a uh, uh, we don't know what asset we're actually depreciating uh, but when you're actually using your uh, chart of accounts always include that name uh, of the asset as part of the accumulated depreciation so that you know what account it goes against. Okay. All right. Prepaid rent expired is 350. All right. So um, if I have prepaid rent and we know that's an asset account and we know that um, the normal balance of the asset account is a debit. Well, if it's expired, that means it's being decreased by 350, right? I mean, think of it like this. On January 1, you have $1,000 uh, of rent, you know, and you're prepaying a whole year by 12 months. That means you're going to prepay $12,000. So this amount would be $12,000, okay? But then on 131, you know, uh, you've used up one thousand dollars of it used up one month of it so now instead of twelve thousand dollars in the account you have a thousand dollars less you should have eleven thousand so here when your prepaid rent expires at 350 that means we're decreasing that prepaid rent amount okay and if we're decreasing that prepaid rent amount that means we have to be crediting the prepaid rent you know the opposite of the debit there so we're going to credit prepaid rent for 350 and we have to debit something else and that would be rent expense you know when it comes to um, the you know when you have prepaid you have unearned service revenue or unearned revenue remember this is an asset and these are liabilities because you owe them right somebody pays you on their books it's still an asset because it hasn't been used yet and when uh, you receive it it's a liability because you owe it right now generally when you look at your chart of accounts your prepaids you know are going to have you know you're going to expense it and your revenues you'd have our revenue accounts I'm sorry revenue accounts um, so whenever you, you you're using unearned like in this case here unearned service revenue generally you're going to have a service revenue account you're going to have something that's named you know a revenue account that's named the same as whatever that unearned revenue account is and the same thing with your prepaids you know you have prepaid rent well generally you're going to have a rent expense account if you had prepaid advertising okay you're going to have an advertising expense account prepaid insurance you're going to have a you know an insurance expense account so it's relatively easy to match up um, you know what account based upon the name of the prepaid account you're generally going to have an asset or I'm sorry you're going to have a revenue or an expense account that's named the same okay so in this case here prepaid rent well you're going to find an account called rent expense um, it's not that uh, you know they match up pretty easy on your chart of accounts. Okay, so lastly, interest revenue accrued. Okay, now notice interest revenue. All right, so um, and it's accrued. Well, that means we've earned. You know, we've earned the revenue, but 
we haven't received the cash for it yet. So if it's interest revenue, and we know that revenues increase on the credit side, I'm going to credit interest revenue for 980, but debits have to equal credit, so I'm going to debit something else. Well, what am I going to credit? What am I going to debit? Well, I'm accruing it, meaning it's still owed to me. And if it's owed to me, that means I own it. And when I own something, you're going to look under your asset accounts. Now, if you look under your asset accounts, and I know that this here is an out of the norm account, but um, you would generally find an interest receivable account. Right? And you would debit interest receivable for $980. You know, think of it as along the same lines as you know, you're making a sale and, and somebody owes you. Well, you know, they're going to owe you and that's going to be an accounts receivable. Well, in this case here, you know, you lend somebody money, you know, they, they have the principal and they're going to pay the interest, right? Well, maybe, you know, the terms of the agreement are that they pay only the interest. They don't need to pay the principal until the end of the loan. Well, when they owe you the interest, that's, you know, a receivable to you, okay? Um, you know, to them, it's an interest payable, right? Because they owe it, you know. Notice what I'm doing here um, and try to link up in your head. I, I like to learn this stuff by association. You know, we talk about prepaid and unearned revenue, right? Prepaid is an asset and unearned revenue is a liability, okay? Well, think in terms of the interest. Well, interest that you receive, all right? So interest receivable is an asset and an interest payable is a liability. Two sides to the same coin and you can associate them in that, that way. If you understand prepaid and unearned, then you also understand interest receivable and interest payable, just like you understand accounts receivable and accounts payable. It's not, you know, don't go memorizing everything. You don't need to, you know, always memorize every little thing. You know, if you understand a concept, you know, associate, all right? If you understand accounts receivable, accounts payable, you understand interest receivable and interest payable. And you understand prepaid and unearned revenue, even though that they're uh, different uh, account names. They all work the same way. They're two sides to the same coin. So it's not like you have to relearn everything over again. Okay, Just associate uh, things in your mind and uh, it makes it easier to learn accounting. Okay, So with that said, I'm going to stop here and uh, do exercise 3-31 in the next video, okay?